So what's this mesh technology all about then? Hi, Tony here and welcome to the cave. And that's the question that I'm gonna try and answer in this video. If you look through my content, you'll see that I've reviewed some center equipment in the past, um, but this is a continually evolving technology and Senna were pleased with the review I did of the uh, 10S on some of the retro styled helmets uh, that they asked me if I would be interested in taking a look at their 30K. Well, yeah, sure, why not? Now, what's different about this 30K setup? It has mesh technology. Now, until the point that I started looking at this, I had no idea what mesh technology is. So I'm hoping I can give you an indication of exactly what it is and how it works and if it's any good. So to be able to test this properly, obviously I need to be able to connect with somebody else and I've been lent the 30K dual pack. Now the good thing about the dual pack is that it comes apparently from the factory with these two units already paired. So as soon as you switch them on, bingo, you should be up and running with your compatriot who's wearing the other set. That's pretty cool. Before we get on to the actual test, let's just take a quick look at what comes in the box. Now, I'm also not gonna spend time showing you how to install this in a helmet. That will vary from helmet to helmet, although it is fairly similar. I'll put a link up in the top corner that will take you to my previous one, which is more about the installation. In this one, I wanna concentrate on what it can do and how well it performs. So let's see what comes in the box for the 30K Jewel. In your top, you have your two 30K units, the helmet connection pre-fitted with the boom mic and the earpieces. If we delve down to the second level, inside this double box, you have a very handy ring binder with all your setup and controls and everything else. Then, as you would expect, you've got two of everything. So you've got a cigarette lighter charger, you've got a USB charger, and then in this bag, you've got all your accessories, your boom mic covers, various clips and fixings, Spare boom mic arm, earpiece covers and fixings, cables, microphone, more EPS covers, phones, bits of sticky. So loads of that and you've got that on both sets so you can get these set up and get using them straight away. Now you may think I'm being a little bit lazy not doing the install, but to be honest, it is a bit of a ball lake. It's difficult to film and there's already a really good resource out there. If you head to the Senna Technologies YouTube page, there is a full 30K installation video. So there's no point in recreating that. You can go away and watch that to see how it all goes together. And in this video, I just want to concentrate on what I think is important is how it works and how it performs. Well, it's set up. It's on the helmet. Let's get out there and give it a test. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go, Tony. Again, I don't want to labor these points, but there are essentially four key control buttons on the headset that you can use. You have the phone button on the back, and you use that in conjunction with the button on the side to start the machine up, just to hold that for a second or so. You've got uh, a jog dial, which will help you control the volume and can also be used to skip through some of the functionality. You have a button on the bottom of the lock mechanism, and that enables you to be able to switch on the ambient mode, but also allows you to go for voice instructions. And then you've got the mesh button on the top and that will instigate a mesh intercom session. So if using the buttons is a little bit tricky, you can download the Senna 30K utility and there you have access to change all of your settings. So you've got your mesh settings, your pairings for your Bluetooth, uh, your phone, stored numbers, music that you've got on your device, FM radio, and then you've got a whole host of other features. So you can check which devices you've got paired. You can uh, go through the basic settings and turn those off and on. So get that how you want it. You've then the volume controls, you can go through that. You've got the various volume controls for all of this. 
and you can download the quick setup and full user guides and it might be an easier way to get things done. So what exactly is Mesh? Well, it's a technology that works in conjunction with Bluetooth. So the 30K unit has a dual antenna and two processors, one for the Bluetooth and one for the Mesh system. And that allows those to work together to give not only a stronger signal, but also bigger access. So, so what does this mean? Well, it means that using Mesh gives you the instant connection uh, without having to pair devices. And it worked, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the two units we had, we powered them up, we both hit the Mesh button, and then with a couple of seconds, we were just talking to each other. The Mesh system here has two modes, public and private. In public mode, uh, you'll automatically connect with any other person that's using uh, a Mesh intercom uh, within the range. This in effect gives you kind of limitless connections because each one spreads out in kind of a, a, a pyramid style I guess is the best way to, to describe it and that does mean that you can eavesdrop in or just join into conversations with any rider that you might cross uh, that's got their mesh switched on. Now that obviously could be slightly off-putting so there is also a private group and the private group means that you can link up to 16 riders you can get guests that listen in, but they have to be invited, but you can link up 16 riders and it keeps them together. Now, the important thing about Mesh is because it doesn't use Bluetooth chains, if one of those riders drops out of range, they'll automatically rejoin when they come back into range. Now, I know some of the Bluetooth units you have problems with, somebody craps out and then you've got to reconnect them. In this, people can come and go in and out of the group and they're seamlessly connected back in and when they drop out you don't lose any of the other so if you've got 16 people riding one drops out the other 15 can carry on chatting and then when the 16th person comes back in they'll reconnect and that leads me nicely on to what can be a thorny subject and that's the distance that these intercoms will cover and I think personally sometimes that distance can be a little bit of a red herring. And I'll come back to that in a second, but what I wanted to do here was just give a real life test of what kind of distance these cover. So I was paired with my riding buddy there, I rode away and we continued to talk to each other and we just kept doing that until the point that we couldn't hear and I'll stop, we'll measure that distance and that gives us some idea of a real life range. Now I think it's a bit of a red herring because generally if you're riding in a group, if you're pretty well disciplined, you'll be checking your rear view mirror as soon as the rider behind you goes out of range, you'll slow down and let him catch up and that then concertinas bump through the group. Now having the comms makes that a little bit easier and it gives you that extra distance and you can be uh, out of sight, but in actual fact, I don't think that really needs to be any more than seven, eight hundred, nine hundred yards in, in real terms. So it was at this point that the conversation started to break up and then it got to the point where I couldn't understand what was being said to me and I stopped to measure and waited for my colleague to catch up with me. And actually he joined back into the conversation before I could actually see him. So that worked really, really well. What was the result? Well, as the crow flies, 1.1 kilometres or 3,600 feet, which I think is ample distance for anybody in a group. It's way out of uh, visual sight, so that's tended to be your first warning. And I can't see any, for me, real life scenarios where I'd want a bigger distance from that. And you have to take into account that this was on undulating terrain and the last section of that road was quite heavily covered with trees. When reviewing an item like the 30k, it's very easy to get bogged down in all the technical details because there's so much you could talk about with this that the video ends up getting too long. So I've tried to keep it short, I've tried to keep it relevant, and these are my findings after using this for a little while. First up is the quality of the stuff that comes in the kit. There is every conceivable piece you will need to get this mounted onto any helmet and get it working. And if you look on the center website, there's a huge range of additional accessories that you can add to it. I have over 30 accessories. Battery life is really good. If you're using the Bluetooth connectivity, you get 13 hours of talk time. If you're using mesh, it's a little bit lower at eight hours, but that should be plenty for a day of riding. It's pretty light too, 61 grams, that's about two ounces. You don't notice it on the side of the helmet. Uh, I didn't have any noticeable drag, I didn't get any noticeable extra wind noise from it at all. Uh, and it lays very easy to hand. The controls, once you've had it on there for a couple of hours, become kind of second nature. 
The noise controls are really useful as well. So it has this advanced noise control system, uh, which really only picks up on your voice. Uh, and that's really nice because you kind of don't get your other people in the group, you don't get their heavy breathing or, you know, all of that sort of general noise. So when you're riding with it, uh, with it on, you don't have the background noise. It is very quiet. And actually on a few times I had to say to the guy I was riding with, are you still there? Because it was so quiet, it was like not having the the, uh, the comms unit on at all. Is it on? Is it on? The ambient mode, which is on the bottom of the mount as well, is also very useful. So if you get off at a petrol station or a garage or you stop to ask directions, if you hit that button, uh, you can hear more of what's going on outside your helmet. So you can have a much easier conversation uh, with the person off the bike. There's a lot of other features that I hadn't gone through. The FM radio on here works pretty well and you've got 10 preset stations. The voice control access via the button on the bottom of the mount. You can hit that. For example, say music, you get a little voice, say stereo music, and boom, it starts playing. It also integrates really well with the iPhone. I was able to press that button, ask it a question, and Siri would pop up. Siri, tell Amazon to drone me a beer. Are there any negatives? Well, to be honest, not really. In the time that we were using it, it only dropped out once. It stayed connected to the phone, but I just lost the connection with the other rider through the mesh. Um, but it was very easy to reset that. I just powered off, powered on again, hit the mesh button, and within 20 or 30 seconds from the point we dropped out, we were back up and running again. And that was done on the fly whilst riding the bike. No need to stop and try to do odd pairing. So that works really well. I've been using Senna stuff for quite some time and I have to say it's never let me down. Okay, so I hope you found that review useful. With a technical product like this, there's bound to be things that people want to know that I haven't covered. So if you've got any questions, just drop them in the comments down below. And until next time, thanks for watching. Take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Yeah.